Just so you're close the door. Just close the door. Give me the bottle. Give me the bottle before I plow you into a... Okay, a okay, just, just calm down. You. Shut up. Calm down. Calm down. <sighs> Whew. You know, girls, I'm... I'm feeling very into sisters right now. What's up everybody and welcome back to the movie Buffer from the book to the movie. Tonight we are going to be reviewing and discussing Practical Magic. Practical Magic is a 1998 American fantasy romantic drama film that is based on the 1995 novel of the same name by Alice Hoffman. The film was directed by Griffin Dune and stars Sandra Bullock, Nicole Kidman, Stockard Channing, Diane Wiest, Aidan Quinn, and Goran Vishniish. Bullock and Kidman play sisters Sally and Gillian Owens, descended from a long line of witches. Raised by their aunts after their parents' death from a family curse, the sisters were taught the uses of magic as they grew up. As adults, Sally and Gillian must use their magic to destroy an evil spirit before it kills them. The film is considered a cult classic, which means it's good. Since this is a review and part of the series from book to movie. Let's talk about the books. Yes, books with an S, not the book of Practical Magic. The movie Practical Magic is not a true depiction of the book. In fact, there are so many things different than the actual novel that I would say this movie is quote unquote inspired by the Owen Women Part 4 novels and not really about this one book. First, let's talk about the book series. There are four magical books and here is the order of publishing. Practical Magic was published in 1995, so it was the first. The Rules of Magic was published in 2017. Magic Lessons was published in 2020. The Book of Magic was published in 2021. Here is the chronological order, which I highly recommend reading first. First is Magic Lessons chronologically. It is set in the 1600s. Magic Lessons begins the story story of the Owens women after Maria Owens was abandoned in a snowy field in England as a baby she came under the care of Hannah Owens who teaches her the nameless art Hannah Owens is where the Owens women get their last name next book is the rules of magic in 2017 it picks up a hundred years later after magic lessons in the 1960s New York City was when the world is about to change, Susanna Owens has three unique children, a red-haired and difficult Franny, shy but beautiful, and perceptive Jet and charismatic but mischievous Vincent. The next book is Practical Magic in 1995, the actual first book. But this book dives deep into the characters of the two particular Owens women, orphan sisters Gillian and Sally. Their family has been blamed for everything that has gone wrong in their small Massachusetts town for generations, and their quirky aunts encourage witchery. The last is the book of magic done in 2021. It begins in a library when Aunt Jet hears the Death Watch beetle and knows she only has seven days to live. But Jet is not the only one in danger. A frantic attempt to save a man's life causes three generations of Owens women and one long lost brother to attempt to break the Owens family curse as they travel from Paris to London to England 
Ireland, where their ancestor Maria Owens first practiced their unnamed art. Now, to learn more about this, please visit Epic Guide Practical Magic Book Series at the link below and check out the video Guide to Practical Magic Book Series. It is by the Literary Lifestyle YouTube page. The books are amazing. My favorite is the first of the chronological version, Magic Lessons. Maria's life is just, I see so much of myself in her. And I, I thought it was just amazing. It was an amazing book. And I knew that because when I watched Practical Magic, the movie, that first scene where they talked about their ancestor, that's the story I wanted to know more about. Who was she? What happened? So when I was thinking about doing a review on Practical Magic, which is a movie I love, I wanted to know more. I wanted to say, hey, who wrote this? Is there a book? And I didn't know. So when I found out about this book, about the Hoffman books, I became an instant fan. The books are amazing, like I said. Now, let's talk about the differences from the movie and the novel. Number one, there was a Jimmy in the book, but and he was hot as hell, but the whole killing, then bringing him back to life and all that, that just didn't happen. He just remained dead and very creepy as a ghost, hanging out in the garden, doing crazy weird things and screwing up their lives. The girls seeing him, that was real. That was part of the actual book. But a lot of the stuff that happens regarding getting him banished did not happen, except for the aunts coming and assisting in doing that. But it was, was not as climactic as it was in the movie, which is probably why they changed it. The second is Sally and the Call Tree Karens. Nope, not in the book. It was interesting and very entertaining of Sally wanting to fit in and be part of her community of Karens, but this didn't occur in the novel, though Sally's resistance of her natural gifts was and it permeated throughout the entire book series. So the fact that she wanted to be normal, she wanted to be part of the regular community, that was part of the actual book, but it's a part of the entire series. So putting it in in this particular movie that she wanted to be liked and thought of as a regular person by these bunch of suburban Karens, that made sense and I was okay with that. Number three. Now the fact that the Karens didn't, didn't exist kind of brings me to the sweeping scene of a group of community women on the side of the Owens women. Never occurred in the book <laughs> and I was kind of waiting for that actually but nope never occurred because again remember they didn't really get rid of Jimmy in that way but it did happen over the series over time the women in the community did welcome these so-called witches and these dark women who actually did things for them there's lots of great love story love potions and there's actually a, a love potion number nine that you have to read if you want to know how to make the love potion number nine the recipe is in the books so read the books number four the biggest thing that stayed in the movie was the curse the curse was created by Marie Owens the ancestor that we see in the beginning of the movie it stayed throughout all of the novels until it was finally broken in the last novel the book of magic you may say, oh my god, okay, you just gave away everything. Actually, I didn't give away anything. The curse was broken, yeah, but how? It was a pretty powerful curse. How was it broken? The curse itself didn't actually go down the way you see in the movie. It wasn't exactly like that. She wasn't really crying over him. She was crying in general about men and life and pain, and she just didn't want her and her descendants to feel that kind of pain. But in the books, it stays throughout. So you get to see how each generation deals with this curse. And it's quite fascinating. It's quite interesting. In the end, in the Book of Magic that came out in 2021, it does kind of bring it all together and it ends the curse, which is great. And you have to read it to figure out how that actually happened. If you really want to dive into the world of the Owens women, you have to read all of the books. 
One movie, though entertaining and fascinating, is not the entire story at all. Fun fact, according to Sandra Bullock in the DVD commentary, while filming the scene where the Owens women are drunk and slinging insults, the actress actually did get drunk on very bad tequila brought by Nicole Kidman. The cast further stated in the film's commentary that they felt supernatural elements of the house started to affect them, but the cast and crew claimed they did hear supernatural noises while filming the coven scene at the very end of the movie. And what's so interesting about that is that we see kind of a pattern is when any of these serious supernatural movies are done, when it's very, 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 very close to what's written in the books of whether it's witches or any kind of supernatural kind of dealings, such as, as you remember, on Poltergeist all the things that happened around Poltergeist and the people after the movie was made. There were, I mean, things like that that happen on a continuous basis. These movies, when you become so close to reality, that's when you start to stir up real ghost. I'm sorry. There it is. You don't see many ghost stories happening on the Friday the 13th movies or any of that crap because that's just horror porn. And another fun fact is for the final scene with all of the townspeople at the Owens home, you know, when they jump off the building, the entire population of the town where filming took place was invited to show up in costume and appear as townsfolk. Now, how cool is that? So, have you watched Practical Magic? Have you read the Hoffman books? Please leave your comments below, and as always, peace to fingers. Oh, and blessed be.